You know, so like, you know, if for the individual, it might not be like a lot, like in U.S. dollar terms. But if you talk about over, I don't know, a million users, that's a lot of hundred dollars right there. You know what I mean? A value that's kind of flowing in ratios for the first few days. So you're saying basically every PRC20 chart is going to have a chart that looks like X where there was, everybody's going to FOMO day one and then the price is going to dump to the floor and then it'll go up. I mean, fuck. I mean, like, I think a lot of PRC20 tokens are going to look like fucking rug pulls on pulls. PLS is going to fucking skyrocket. PLSX, the same. And then the ratio for the, the value of the PRC20 token could fucking just, like, fall off a cliff. Now, does that happen? I don't know, but it absolutely could. Depends on how many people actually use their PRC20 tokens, like, go to the chain, add the RPC settings, see value there, and then decide to sell. I don't know. It's a race to the bottom, basically. And some of them are going to be awesome deals. So, right? so decide to sell or decide to, you know, to bridge in their favorite thing and pair it with their new copy of the favorite thing with its new twin. Yeah, so, yeah, and that's and that's true, and then, you know. But then, uh, then also, if people sell the share of the PRC twenty token, it goes down a lot, and then, then maybe that's an opportunity there. People are like, well, fuck, this thing fucking fell off a cliff. I think this is going to have value in the long term. After you know they get their shit straight, I'm going to buy all. I'm going to buy as much of this as I can, and then just wait and hope that like this thing has uh, finds a use case on pulse. Or maybe I believe already that it's going to have a use case. And then I see this opportunity where it went down like 90% or 90. Yeah, yeah. It went down 90% in a day. And I go, fuck, I want to get some of that. I'll put 100 bucks into that or whatever. So when would be the best time to stake? Hey, so be the best time to stake when the market opens up, when the bridge is live? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. So if somebody wants to stake Pulse X, right? Because they got Pulse X. I'm talking like bonus points and stuff, right? Like we don't know exactly what's going to be offered, but when would be a good time to get in when the market is going down or when the market is going up? Well, in that case, Steve, it doesn't matter because it's about pools. So there's no timing in that. It's like a pool exists. You can put your, take, you can stake your pulse X. Like that's going to be, I don't know if there's going to be any available when we launch anyway. I mean, it could take days or weeks for a pool to even exist. For a single asset stake, you know, pulse X. Don't even know. Definitely not day one, day two, day three. Don't they have to wait till the Dow voting or something like that to come online? Well, they're, maybe you they're have already to wait for the Dow voting. I mean, they could have one or two like already lined up just to like have something there. You know what I mean? Like one, maybe they have like one lined up so that like at least with something there, and then then we vote on like new ones or something. I don't know, or we have nothing. And we all we have to vote on on every single one of them. Either I mean I'm fine with either. I just don't know what they're gonna do. The show is getting more interesting and interesting every day. I love it. New stuff to talk about. And finally, people are starting to come to reality. Reality of what? The pulse is an unstoppable monster. First Amen. Set up for like long term, man. I I just talk about this like ups and downs and this happens and this happens and if that happens this happens and if it happens then it doesn't happen you know like i'm like it will do whatever it pleases based on the most people will make end of story i have no insight on it nobody has for me it's like i got in way before it go, went live that's the biggest plus point and i'm just looking at two three four five six seven seven whatever years down the road you know i'm not tripping out trying to make a quick duck of selling jumping off switching on and doing all that crazy stuff yeah i might my, my, just a moment doors i might do okay, just a moment let me, let me get somebody unmuted in the chat hold on monsieur hey. dude hey yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey from paris france thanks a lot um, my question, um, to talk about the, the I, I miss Pulse sack. Pulse X got that sack, but, so I'm, I'm going to have to go, uh, from Fiat or, you know, something to, to Pulse when the bridge opens. And I'm still looking for perspectives and, you know, people's opinions and, uh, 
where the USDC is wrapped is going to be wrapped, and that'll be a a secure route. I'm not I'm, I'm not trading my pulse X. I'm not going to go you know the pulse X route pre bridge. I'm holding the pulse X. So I'm just I'm just looking for opinions on you know when it goes live. Uh, how do I go from fiat to to pulse? How do I get myself some pulse? Uh, well, yeah. remember, sir. Oh, that, how, uh, how, patient, uh, how patient do I have to be? Yeah. Well, don't don't forget that there are going to be a couple faucet options. If you're not familiar with what a faucet is, traditionally, when new networks have launched, we have all kinds of people like you that they don't have the the gas token that they need to you know to do transactions. So how do they get some of the gas token if they don't have the gas token to do the transaction to get the gas token? So that's where faucets coming in. So yeah. you, know, you may want to to check out. Uh, I think How to Pulse is a great uh, resource for general, you know, resources that are you know, um, other. It's a great resource in general for all of Pulse Chain. I'm pretty sure they have some faucet options for people exactly like you. They got in on Pulse X, but don't have any of the base layer token, the Pulse. Um, and so there'll, there'll be some amount of free claimable tokens that people like you can hit up. And you know, at least get some. Yeah, I will have, thanks to my ETH, I will have also my teeny bit of, but, but it's more like, uh, do I go USDC into Pulse? Uh, it, it, when we, when you talk about USDC being turned off, you're talking about the, the PUSDC, right? I mean, the bridge will, I'll be able to bridge over, you know, wrapped USDC. I mean, the bridge will wrap my USDC, right? And, uh, makes sense. Yeah, the, when they talk about shutting off USDC earlier, they were they were talking about the brand new out of thin air copy that'll exist on Pulse. Right. So one route from fiat to Pulse is going to be you know wrapped USDC on the bridge, right? Right. That should be a valid play once the bridge is open to wrap your USDC into the bridge. If that's a bridgeable asset, I think it should be. And if then, that's, then and that's your a question, price. that's what I, that's why I'm asking. If it's a yeah bridgeable token, so if not USDC, then what else? Well, hopefully, Excite Walter said it was going to be Uniswap. If it's offered on Uniswap, you'd be able to on the east side just buy pulse, and then hopefully. That'll work. That'd be really easy. Oh, really? I, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that uh, Pulse is going to be aware. Yeah. Uh, available uh, available on, people, on, on, on Uni. Uh, people overlook that. It's the most obvious thing. It's like literally if you have any asset on Uniswap on Ethereum, that you can route it to right. Pulse when the bridge happens. And it's, that's an option. Mine. We will discount that. But you can just in mind all the higher transaction fees on, a, on the Ethereum side. You know, kind of the point of this thing is to have low transaction fees. So if you can bridge and do all of your swapping on Pulse Chain for lower fees, you know, especially for somebody that's trying to trying to get in early and buy some, you know, margins might be tighter. They might be a more concerned with. But we're trying to get in. On right? we're, we're just trying to get in. Exactly. But if there is if there is an on ramp directly to Pulse. That's what we're looking for. Well, the bridge is the on ramp, right? So, but wrapping what to Pulse, you know? To, to. Yeah, well, the, the bridge is one route from Ethereum to Pulse, but there could be a fiat on ramp, say like an exchange that actually has direct onboarding to Pulse. But the information that I've had so far is like that's not going to be like a US based thing. It'll be more like a European thing or some, some other. Thing. Right, and so, and there's yeah. and there's a rumor that that'll be at launch. That would be at shortly launch. after launch was what I would say. I don't know what defined shortly after. It could be days. Yeah, days, who knows? And how crazy do you? Okay, and or else on Uni, but then I'm buying Pulse, and it goes into my. Pulse you'd chain. be wrapped pulse. You'd, you'd be buying a wrapped pulse, and then you could like just bridge that over to pulse chain for the oh, pulse. Okay. Right? Okay. Now you own it, right? You own pulse in wrapped form, and now you yeah. buy it at whatever price that is. Right. That could be beneficial, right? You eat the thirty dollar fee, 
you buy your purchase right. on Uniswap, or you eat the thirty dollar fee and you have USDC and then you you rent goods at the pulse and then you do the trade on Pulse X, you're okay. gonna have to well. one way or another pay the gas fee to either do the Uniswap transaction and bridge or you just bridge over to Pulse X. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. Just a decision. You just have to make a decision on what you want to do. Yeah, that's 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 fine. I'll pay the fee, and you know, that's, that's the game. So, okay, okay, okay. And okay. The, and in those first days, I mean, I don't know. We're talking about a lot of volatility, but over a fifty x in the first days, and. Uh, anybody's guess. Uh, yeah, it's like a, a trillion uh, multiple X on the first minute. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. If you're a Pulse X holder, wouldn't you want to do all your transaction on Pulse X versus another X? If you own Pulse X, you're already on Pulse Chain, so you have to do it on Pulse X. But this, but if you're already, if you don't, if you're not on PulseX, if you're not on Pulsechain already, and you're trying to you move US dollars through the system, you have some options available to you. I'm just laying out the options. The first thing he said, the first, the first thing, the first thing Monsieur Dog said that's really smart is that he's committed to not trying to slosh his bags around and trade PulseX for Pulse. I think that a lot of people that have a lot of big ideas for how to swap from Pulse X to Pulse or Pulse to Pulse X are going to end up really disappointed in the long run. That's just my thought. You know, it's my caution I give to new people. Like, you might think you're getting a good deal today, but the market will let you know every day for the rest of your life that you were wrong. Hey, Bob, can I just break in here for a minute? I got one more person I got to get unmuted. 7-7? Seven, seven. You're unmuted. Can you give us a sign of life, please? Hello, I am alive. Got any questions or comments? You had your hand raised. No, I've been waiting. No, it was a while back. Thanks. Right on, man, sir. Thanks, everybody. I'm there. Um, for, uh, I think like, the best entry point is buying hex and just giving you P hex and then use the window. And, Position yourself, it's like the safest way. We just had like a 10 hour discussion on this. Yeah, the the, the, the Park goes down to what? Parkway, Park, Parkway doesn't want to hear any of that. I think we talked about this a little bit last night, right, Parkway? Was that you? I was here, yeah. But again, like, you you had a statement that you wanted to what, bridge over USD, see, right, and make use these of guys it. Have been, these guys have been talking about right that that your hex your hex plate when you're talking about right now is not the best pool to be in. You're going to be diluted, right? It'd be better to bridge in some USD and buy it when it dips because of what's going to happen because of what everybody's been discussing. And you've been hearing that. And you still haven't changed your thoughts, even though the people have given you the, given you the explanation. So, which is fine, right? But why can't you counter that argument with why that's a better option when the other people have been saying the last 24 hours that that's like one of the worst options and you can keep sticking with yours. I think, yeah, it's a super option because, you know, you position yourself once and then you end it for the long term anyway, right? Now, the stuff you talk about is like timing, making sure, and hoping that everything works, right? If something happens for whatever reason, any technical issues on your end, you would be missing out on that window. And then you missed out on the entire run. This one technical issue is enough to dismantle your entire plan. I know, but it, it, it just sounds like that there really is going to be some serious volatility with uh, with that. It's true, right? It's in the, the game. Volatility so, is in the game, right? And that's going to be highly, you're, you're going to be in a pool that's highly volatile. 
right? So again, I'm not kidding. So during the 48 hour window, that's the time when you like, position yourself from PLS or PLSX, right? If you miss the iron bills. And, and then it, it's like, a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, for sure thing that's going to happen. That's why I'm saying it's like the least of a, a risky move, even though it's maybe not the best move, but it's the least risky move. It's, it's a guaranteed positioning yourself versus the window opens up and now you got to do all your trades. You got to do all your moves, right? And something, just one technical issue, doesn't matter hardware, software related, whatever, your internet goes down, right? Whatever, right? It, it, it's just it, it's just so much more stress versus just knowing, okay, I might not be on the best part of it or the worst part of it, but I'm on the safe side of it, right? You just position yourself. You just wait for the announcement. There's your window. Swap your coins because people will, as we know, change and, and sell their stuff because they missed out on some other thing or they overpurchased something. And, you know, they missed out on post for an example. So there will be people letting loose of their coins. And then you just buy whatever it's available in the market for you, or you position yourself, and then you just kick back, relax, and wait. You sell or they people, but people are some. Yeah, these are bots, though. I mean, I can roll with that, power play. It is a good oh, long term play. It's a good long term play, my friend. I can roll with that. Thank you for having the discussion. For sure, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you're right. Hey, hey. Best part is what I'm looking forward to have. I know what I'm doing that's going to work out like with the minimal risk of, you know, messing things up. I mean, holding hex isn't a bad idea. I mean, I'm going to hold hex on the Ethereum side. I'm going to have my copies, but I'm not actually planning on doing any trades. And that's what's different about what I'm doing versus other people. So you got to know what you're doing and then take the options and make the best decision you can. Right. Lots of options. So I think you're laying out a pretty good thesis for somebody that's more of a value trader or a long-term holder. And, you know, you got to remember that some people out there are, are less risk-averse. Like, I think I'm way more at your camp, Parkland. Uh, but I probably am not going to make a single trade during the rough seas of the pre-bridge time. Just, I don't know. I think there's two. I think that the potential of trading yourself out of a really good position and not even knowing it, I think of it as trying to go from one moving target onto any number of other moving targets. You just you just don't know what opportunity cost you're given in the future. But some people, somebody out there is going to risk it for the biscuit and watch the, say for instance, the the cop all of these copy cones of, of Link, for instance, really well established Ethereum project. They're going to see Link like just drop off a cliff. And they're gonna scoop up probably, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of tokens. Who knows? You know, maybe, maybe it stays out for them, maybe it stays down there forever. Who knows? Yeah, no, I totally agree with you there. Like, you know, it, it's just, I, I think, like, you know, having Hex on, on the ETH network and then you get your copies, right, on, on, as P Hex, like, it's a safe move, you know. The founder himself said there is going to be parity, so that's that's a guaranteed statement that long term or short term, you're going to double your bags. That's a win already there. Now, if you want to be more risky, some will make it and some will, some won't, right? But for me, it's just too much like uh, risk at that point. It's just like I'm more comfortable to go with stuff that makes more sense versus you know jumping boat. I guess. If, all, if all else fails, you know the good old stand. You know the good old standard of wait for thing, wait for the seas to calm and dollar cost. It's not a bad. It probably won't make you the highest return on investment, but it's you know it's a tried and true. It's it's a good basic fallback position. I I got a quick question. Uh, for the better part of the year. Most people that come in here have came with a understanding that Hex on Pulse would reach parity with Hex on ETH. 
So, just yesterday, this new thought came into the chat that no, it won't reach Perry, it's gonna fall off a cliff. Talking about hex on pulse. Am I hearing that right? Or am I getting that wrong? Or is it, you know, but for a year people have been saying, oh, it's gonna reach parity quick. And now it's saying, that it's going to fall off a cliff. So which one is right? Well, you can't know until it comes out. But if, if it, you know, in my position, I'm going to get as much hex as I can now to get my copy, and then I'm going to also buy hex on the Pulse chain when it releases. I'm not going to spare no Richard Hart projects um, a second glance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to immediately Try to get in um, and get my position immediately. Hey, Mr. Windshield Wipers, ch change those damn windshield wipers. Uh, yeah, I, I should change that. You sure? It's not fun to listen to. So, for anybody that missed it earlier, uh, I, I, brought, I introduced a scenario what if somebody that controls the keys for the sack? Sack, sack address where 250 billion hex are sitting. What if they decide to use that hex basically as the first transaction across the bridge, you know, taking half of it and half of its copy on Pulse Chain and pairing the two as the first possible EHEX PHEX bridge? And ProFX was in here earlier and he laid out a really good counterpoint about not reaching parity too quick because if you have a really established coin like that with too much liquidity that has parity too fast during this frothy launch period, what may end up happening is that the, that the high liquidity Ethereum pulse, or I'm sorry, that the high liquidity Ethereum hex pulse hex pair on both sides on, of, of the network, on the Ethereum network and the, the pulse network could be used as a value channel to vampire or value out of pulse chain and back into Ethereum. Couldn't you do, couldn't you do, on the flip side, couldn't you do the same thing if Hex is dirt cheap on the get-go? Somebody's just going to come in and scoop it up and get it for cheap. And, I mean, in both scenarios here, someone gets cheap Hex, I think. And some, it's going to be somewhere, you know, it's not going to be us plebs, you know. So for an example, Gabriel, let's take like $194 million for 15 years. He's going to receive his exact copy on Pulse, on PX. His entire stake is going to be copied over. And, and then, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm completely confused now. Uh, again, I think just sticking to your guns, which you initially went with, is the best solution. But each their own. Yeah, at the end of the day, nobody else can make you sell out of your position. Like that's your own. That's your own decision. You know, even if we get the nobody likes it possibility of seeing the price for Pulse or Pulse X even on just ratios, dip below the quote-unquote sacrifice price. You only lose if you sell. You know, if you want to take the risk and try to accumulate more at that point, maybe it's a good idea. Um, but holding on to what you have, it's proven to be the best one. Holding through the dips is, is the best proven long-term strategy you've seen across all cryptos, all projects, all that. Agreed. I think we can all agree on that. I think we all know what we're doing with our pulse and pulse axes. We're holding that, no matter what. Yeah, the only kind of issue is the hex supply is effectively being doubled, and someone's going to get cheap hex here, I reckon. Maybe. Maybe unless, unless someone does decide to do like what I described, where you bring in 
large amount of liquidity and block those two together, then you know, would both price would the price ultimately stay at thirteen cents, for instance? I don't think so. Long term, I think it would probably behave more like a stock split. You would see, you would see it dip, you know, roughly to half, and then both halves would go up together. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. But Profex was dead against that um, kind of scenario because uh, he reckons that, like the uh, PRC twenty holders, can just swap their PRC twenties for the USDC, and then get swap that for the hex, and then leave the system and swap it into whatever. So you know, I'm not well, the problem the problem I'm saying is that for the better part of the year, people have been saying, "Okay, it's going to be parity," and a lot of it's only a hundred and plus people in this chat, but thousands of people have come through here over the last year. And they're ready to take their e um, EHEX off Ethereum and bring it over to Pulse to pair up. And what Profix have just said in the last 24 hours is that it's going to be a huge arbitrage event to where people could just take that money and run with it and leave HEX at a fraction of the price. Am I hearing that right? Or it, tell me if I'm wrong, y'all, but that's what I'm hearing. Even if that's the case, if you stay on ETH network, for example, you're going to get more APY. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they just shoot themselves in the foot. It's, it's a risky move, man. It's like jumping blindfolded. Somebody telling you to jump in based on a certain calculation. I don't know, like, how many people did sacrifice their pre ICO deals where they're, like, very confident, you know. That's the experience level you would need, you know. You've been wrecked a few times, won a few times more, actually, than you lost, and then you got something to say. I think, like, not, not you per se, but, you know, a person that comes and says, uh, you should. You know, maybe this and that, blah, blah, blah. What do you got to do? Paul's OG, they haven't been saying that the last year. That's going to reach parity right away. There, you, of course, you've had some people saying that, but the it, I don't think that's been an overwhelming consensus that, oh, it's going to reach parity right away. Eventually, yes. Right. Benjamin, but, Richard but, himself said that he didn't believe that you would get cheap hex on Pulse. They have been saying it for a year. Yeah, but not parody right, not parody right away. I think there's been plenty of arguments or talk on it. You know, not saying that. I think that that's what you wanted to hear because that's what you believe. Excuse me, uh, Melo. Melo, can you please check your DM? If, if no, add, uh, 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 really quickly. Yeah, like OG. Uh, Hold on a second. Okay, okay. Hold on a second, please. Hold on a second, please. Melo, are you there? You got your ears on? Yeah, I got Thanks, you. man. Thanks, everyone. So, like, OG, you're like, yeah, you've heard people say that both hacks are going to reach parity, but. You're kind of reading into it that people think people think that it will reach parity, but you're reading into it that it's going to happen fast. It, both hexes will eventually be elect, eventually be uh, valuable or really valuable on both sides, but they won't be exactly the same price. And we nobody's saying that it's going to happen right after the fork. So, <laughs> like. So, just one more thing, just one more thing. And, like, personally, I think that ETH hex is probably going to go down after the fork. I think Pulse hex is not going to go down after the fork. I think that will really run up. But, you know, when they reach parity, nobody's saying that it's going to be, like, like right after, right after the fork. 
actually, uh, I just watched a video of Richard Hart kind of alluding to it could be the first tick. So. <laughs> That's what I've been hearing. Oh, wait, here, can I say one thing? I've been, I haven't been allowed to speak, so I'm going to speak now. Just because Richard Hart wants something to happen doesn't mean he can magically make it fucking happen. Now, eventually, can we say it's possible? Possible it could be in rich parody? Yes. Over the long term, it could. But he's not a magician. The market's got to like, make it in B parody. I do believe he's going to do with his. The devs are going to do all they can to make, you know, everybody rich and shit with no expectations. But literally, like, he can't guarantee shit. He can design the thing and hope that it does what he thinks it's going to do. And that's all good. Uh, but that's, I mean, the OA kind of is a magician because he's got the biggest bag. That, that's what we've been talking about here. You know, he can sell liquidity pools, uh, massive. Uh, thickness, so you can fix the ratio at one to one. That, that's the whole uh, point of this discussion. It's just the, the problem is someone is going to get someone somewhere is going to get some cheap hex, and no matter how you play it, I think somebody's going to get cheap hex somewhere, and someone's going to get wrecked. You know, but <clears throat> hey, this is CH. You know, hopefully not too many people get wrecked because that's what the community is for. And for each and every one of us, even though I know everybody wants to get rich, you know, independently. I mean, that's what we're here for. So hopefully we're speaking as a, as a group for the most part. It can take care of each other whenever this happens. I mean, no one's going to cater or, 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 or pull anybody and hand walk them everywhere. But I mean, I would, I would hope that not just one voice and that not selfishly or independently we don't take care of one another so we can actually pre prevent each other from getting wrecked. You know, because it's sometimes just unintentional. People just don't know or they may get the wrong or incorrect information. And yeah, shame on them. But on the other side, I thought we were here to help each other. Yeah. I mean, I, I, no, nobody knows really, but I think the wheels figured this out. At around 40 cents, I figured out the supply is going to be doubled, and then you have the price, you know? I think that's where we saw this dump. What Profix had been saying is making a lot of sense because with all the PRC 20s, only worth 3% of the entire supply of Pulse, how much value can that have against Pulse? Can you go into that a little bit more, please? Well, basically, what Profix said. Is, I mean, it's been known that the total supply that the that the bots will buy up the PRC twenties is about three percent of the supply of of Pulse. So, with that being said, once the market, I mean, once once mainnet goes live, how how much supply? I mean, how much how much value? Can that three percent have against ninety-seven percent value for the pulse? So basically, all the PRC twenties are going to be dirt cheap. That's what I was getting here. I would say not hex though, not p hex. Well, with with the with the liquidity, I think he said it was like two million dollars. If you have people that got all this PHEX and they're wanting to go into Pulse and the liquidity pool is two million, I mean, if people are swapping PHEX for Pulse, that's going to make the price go down. Well, I mean, you got you're assuming there's nobody there to buy it. Yeah, you've you got people like Jack and Michelle that just, just, just one person like Rack and Michelle, he's planning on making the price go to 50 cents. He said, God isn't going to come along and save you guys around every corner. 2.2 million is not that much. What he's talking about. God will. Okay. Okay. So, 
what he's talking about, there's some real shit that's going to happen, and you guys need to pay attention. I, I'd be interested in your view, Benjamin. I'm not as articulate. I know how to talk about it in my head, right? And um, in the last 24 hours, uh, some Profax has been kind of uh, talking about some things I had in my head, not exactly, but for a long time now. So I, I don't want to talk about it right now. I don't know. I can't talk this morning, but keep coming on here. We're going to be talking about it more. You guys, you guys sound really gloomy. Like, if you guys have uh, sacrificed for Pulse, or if you sacrifice for Pulse X, you're about to be filthy rich. And if you think that, like, suddenly hexagons are in for, like, a rude awakening or something, uh, you haven't been here long enough. Hex is, uh, the that's third, not what, the third time That's not what they're saying. If there's just going to be some volatility in a lot of your plays, with this hex now and all these people that are buying hex to get into uh, Pulse Chain and Pulse X, this strategy of holding hex and dumping it to get, get Pulse Chain and Pulse X is counterproductive to the price of hex in a big way because of these liquidity pools. And it's going to happen. Actually, I think that's already been priced in there. Like, like, I think that's where we've had this dip. I think they knew what was going to happen already. So I think we've seen the floor. Yeah, uh, I would... I would... Uh, Respectfully, you have to disagree that Hex will have a problem. 100%. It's, uh, it's here to say, man. Short, short term, Paul. Nobody's debating it long term. Just a little short term. Right? So that Paul Play said, hey, you're going to be fine if you do not or this or that. But there's a lot of people who are buying Hex pre fork to dump it after to get in to get into um, Pulse Chain and Pulse X, and it's going to have a, a dramatic effect. And of Listen, I'm, I, I'm one of the guys that want I, to get cheap Pulse, so either way, I'm good, but this is the new I'm, thought that came into the chat, so I'm just discussing it. I'm, I'm one of the guys that want both, man. I want both and X. I know there's thousands and thousands of people like me, so I'm not worried about that. But it just seems like, like for, um, you know, having a, a thin liquidity pool has helped, helped us on Ethereum. It seemed like it might come back to haunt us on Pulse. Maybe I'm wrong. But but eventually, with time, though, uh, wouldn't the liquidity pool uh, increase with time? Uh, maybe I'm not understanding. I think one thing that's really being missed out on is the infrastructure on Pulse. Right? Like the, the more finance exists, the more clientele will show up. Right, which is people that have interest in the product on polls. And this is where additional traffic keeps coming in. You gotta take that into consideration as well. Yeah, mass adoption is definitely gonna be necessary with other resources and tools such as Yeah, well uh, you know, I'll give you a quick numbers here, you know. Uh, so we all know there was about, let's say, 60,000 or less people that actually sacrificed for Pulse, right? Um, then you take, you know, some time in between, then you had the Pulse sacrifice. 
And everybody who got pulse is like, damn. Some of the people said, I got pulse. Some of the people said, well, I wish I sacrificed more for pulse. Some people are saying, you know, I, you know, I, I only got pulse X. I wish I got pulse. And then you look at Richard Hart's Twitter followers over the time period. First he had, eh, not so many. Now he has over 200,000, right? But that's more than he had when there was the Pulse X sacrifice just a short time ago. Now we have a fresh 60,000 people that are following Richard that probably have neither Pulse X or Pulse Chain and are accumulating Hex, right? And of course, if they want to accumulate it, they don't want the price to drop, but it will if they plan to swap it for Pulse Chain, right? But I don't think that they would do that because if they buy Hex with the sole intention, they can also buy other coins as well, other ERC-20s, right? So you guys got to look at it from that perspective. There's a lot of new people and there's a lot of fresh money that's going to be pumped into this. Yeah, but the, the, the thing about that is, is that no, only a very few people know if they swap their hex into pulse, then it's going to hurt the price of hex. That's not that's not the you know common knowledge right now. Yeah, but if you're asking me if it's going to be volatile and crazy within the first few days, I think anyone would tell you yes. Ultimately, it's going to work itself out either way. In six months, it's all be a mute point. Agreed. And we're all going to be blessed. For sure. 100%. Yep. You're right, Jake and Nader. Hey, but Pulse OG. Wouldn't it be an offset, though, if, and not just, I mean, even though there was a lot of speculation in regards to Rackham, you know, and he's got all this money waiting, wouldn't it be an offset if he were to? I mean, one person can't change the entire uh, market. They can definitely make an impact. So if he does $100 million on both sides, maybe it would counter, give a counter effect to the ones that are selling off their heads. Well, like Profix said, these people ain't into giving away money. And basically, that's what it'll be doing. Is, is, if they take a position on both sides, the arbitrage will be um, taking the money and leaving with it. Because of all the ERC, PRC 20s taking that and getting out through hacks. And the guy that provides that is providing it out for everybody on his guy. But we're racking our brains and beating ourselves upside the head and losing sleep in regards to something we can't control. Well, we're only talking about it because it's a new thought that came into the chat. I've been in here a year, and this is just yesterday was the first time that this was brought up. And that's true. And I've actually heard it for a while. Paul's full juice. I've been saying saying that for a long time. Not in that way, but I've been saying that you ain't getting your two for one on hex. And it ain't going down like everybody thinks. Now, the only reason I keep, right. the only reason, only reason I keep saying that is not to, to keep tooting my horn, but Every time I was criticized, I was this, I was that. I got, I, I get DMs, right? Telling, people tell me I'm stupid. I don't know nothing. I've been in here 10 years in this game. I think I probably got a few good instincts. Uh, again, it's a new blockchain. You know, oh, it, that, it's, 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 um, it's a new philosophy, and it needs to be played out. And then once it plays out, then we'll see, like, what happens, right? Like, till then, everyone is just guessing. Yeah. You know what? And things are evolving. And as new information is being brought to light, and that's why things change. And we got to remember, uh, we got to remember, building... 
an ecosystem here. It doesn't just stop with uh, the launch of hope. It's going to keep on building. I have a question, guys. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first of all, uh, I was listening to that discussion yesterday. I really appreciate uh, the persistence of uh, Benjamin. Uh, I remember the way he left the chat, that he came back. That's good. Uh, so, I've uh, had about uh, the value of a thousand. And I don't want to swap to pulse. I can buy my pulse on the Uniswap. Ugh. What do I lose if I keep the heads? I can still get the copy. Do I lose the value or I can't, I can't gain it back maybe after a month, after two months? I can still get the copy, yeah? You will retain the copy, but you have to make an independent decision on if you want to stake it so you can hold it forever. As Pepe says, golden goose. So just be mindful of that. I think that's something else to remember. When you guys invested in Hex, you didn't just invest in uh, Shibu, Ibu, Inu, or uh, you know, some crap coin. You invested in Richard Hart. Let's not forget that. That's right. So what is the future of Pulse Chain? Melting faces. At the end of the day, I think everybody wants Pulse. Um, and it's going to make everything go down besides Pulse. Will it be opportunities to pick up some cheap Hex and cheap PLS X? It, it looks like uh, it might be an opportunity to pick up some cheap GPRC 20s and uh, PLS X. But in Pulse, Pulse will never be cheap. Was I'm, buying cheap. Pepe's, I'm buying Pepe's Pulse, so it's going to be cheap. Oh, Pepe's Pulse? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, hey, Pulse, I want you to buy everybody's. Buying Pulse Chain, right? Pulse X is going to be at a major discount in a way better long term ratio what you're going to be getting at. Pulse X is what y'all should be thinking about getting. The value to that is way more, right? More people every day, all these new people coming in, you guys would be surprised. Like, all these other people that come in from the other communities, they keep talking about Pulse X.
You know, Benjamin, we talked about this. That's my whole play to get as much post X as I can. I already got plenty of post. Is to get as much post X. And now this new thing about Hex being cheap, I didn't expect it. But if Hex is cheap, I'm definitely getting a, a bunch of that as well. So. And so, if, if you guys, as an, as a, if you were a new person coming in, right, and you could get twice as many Pulse X as you could Pulse Chain, and with Pulse X you can stake it in a single-sided pool and make make money on that, which you can't do in Pulse Chain, which one do you think these people are going to be buying? Pulse X, Pulse X, Benjamin, Pulse X. I wish to God, and I'm going to shut up and listen a little bit more, I'm sorry, guys, but I wish to God that I had just a huge bag of uh, Pulse Chain and not Pulse X because I would, t I would delete my, I would trade all my Pulse Chain into Pulse X at that high ratio, like five to one. That would be just the biggest play ever. Maybe. Maybe. Because even if it's even if it's pulse, let's say pulse chain went up to ten thousand x, and pulse x went up to five thousand x, that's only one times more, right? So if you can get three to one from your pulse chain to pulse x, or whatever, whatever that was, that's a way better uh, prop value proposition. Anything over two. I wouldn't personally trade if it's not, if it's not yeah, one to one right for Pulse X or the To fulfill to the two X, you know what I mean? Like, people, like, if, if someone comes in with, like, with 10 million and they need to double their money real quick and they do a two X, goodbye. And, and, and there are people out there, man, you know, like, they come in with, uh, you know, 149 million and stake it for 15 years. It's all about the value proposition and the hour of the beholder. Well, people got people got to look at it like this. Most of the top thousand sacrifices are people that made a lot of money doing with hex. So they had a shit ton of hex, and they just sacrificed it uh, for pulse. So that's how they got their big bags. It's not like you know they're they're looking to 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 do a, a two x and get out just because they sacrificed. Ten million dollars worth of uh, hits to get pulse. When 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 the whole you know idea is that this thing could ten thousand x, it could thousand x, five hundred x. Why would you just take a double when basically it's free? It's free pulse that people got. And a fundamental for Pulse X is this. All the people that have paper hands with their Pulse X trading it for Pulse Chain, right? They're going to be trading with Pulse X. And the, the Pulse Chain people who are, have more diamond hands, because those are people, because of network effect, like most of the people in Pulse Chain um, were original people and uh, in Hex. You know, through the network effect, you got more people in Pulse Chain that, you know, aren't too familiar with that. So all the Pulse X paper hands is going to be traded to Pulse Chain people who have diamond here. That's a pump of mental for Pulse X. That was a good point. In any yeah, return, you have to have some pulse, bro. That I yeah, you know, no, I agree. In my, in I agree. Opinion, in my opinion, that theory right there is flawed because even though those people that are going to be trading their pulse X for pulse chain, uh, uh, all of a sudden become um, the original pulse chain holders, it doesn't mean that they're not going to extract value. From the system, excuse me. Um, because remember, those 
those OG Mexicans that are post against now, the OG Postkins, are already post Mexicans as well. So they already got their bags set. Like the 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 OGs, they already know the game from the get. They've been in this channel from the get go, so they already have their plan way set. They already have all three of their bags. They got their they got money on the side waiting for the dips, and they got their ladders. They got everything set. So the fact that people are all of a sudden gonna trade their post sets for post chain, and then all of a sudden that money is like gonna stay on post chain uh, on post sex, nah, that's not true. They're gonna take their money. The OGs are gonna take their money. They're gonna take their they're gonna take their profit because the 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 rate the exchange rate is gonna be ridiculous in the beginning. You're gonna pay out the ass for that post chain. And they're gonna get they're gonna make that money and then that, that's gonna be extracted. I don't know if anybody who owns a shitload of pulse chain depends on selling it the first six months. There's no need to sell it. Why would you sell it? I don't know. I got a shitload and I ain't selling it. I'm never selling my pulse. <laughs> Amen. Not, not to say that there isn't those people, but to think that you're going to get a good deal from somebody that is an avid investor, I don't see it happening. And, and when I say good deal, what I mean is there's not going to be a lot of people that are going to have a lot of pulse. <laughs> I think mean, you're going to be able to buy just enough for a bad price that you be able to transact. Now, there is 3% on float, but I don't think that's going to be around for very long. Because the OGs have had a chance to reposition their finances, and they're going to come in with bread, too. Just saying. Here's another uh, perspective. Um, and I love Benjamin, I love your perspective too. I, I really do. I like, like your different perspectives. But one thing I think that we ought to consider is um, that just a year ago, Hex was like a penny, two cents, maybe three. The, the same thing um, that Richard said a year ago, he doesn't want to see cheap Hex anywhere. So even if you guys are saying this true and Hex does go down, I have a, a, a funny feeling that Richard's going to find a way to do something that incentivizes people to buy hex. So I'm, I'm not worried one bit. Just, I invested in, in Richard Hart, not Dogecoin. <laughs> even, if, even if the price magically goes down in hex, we're all given for free if we sacrificed Pulse and Pulse Hex. So there will be money flows. There's a shit ton of new money that's being created out of thin air, basically. That'll rectify that very fast. So, like, you know, I don't expect there to be cheap hex on the float. You're, you know, will, uh, available to buy, like, for very long at all. Will there be, like, flash dumps? Flash pumps? Sure. It's going to be crazy. Exactly, V. Just like you and all the other OG Hexicans, I know you guys got a shitload of money sitting on the sideline just waiting for that dip because it happened in the original, right? It's a different different way, but there was a dump. So, And I know you guys have been talking about this for years. So I know for a fact that there's a lot of money on the sideline just waiting for that dip to chop up that, to chop up that cheap hex or that what cheap whatever. And that's not going to last. Well, well I mean, billionaires, what they're going to do, right, is they reposition themselves. Sometimes they even take on debt to get into this crypto game. And they want to buy up as much land on this, this, this project as possible so they can have the most shares when it does eventually appreciate. Now... To get your position early means you're setting your place on the battlefield before most of this land is taken up, and now you're buying up, 
you know, uh, expensive, you know, land that's maybe doubled or tripled in price at that time. I would recommend it. I'd say go in knowing, okay, maybe I'll spend 5% of my uh, fiat and, and, and just hold my position in pulse, right? Or if you can afford to spend more, do that. But I think um, everyone should at least look at getting their hands on some pulse, even if it's for a bad deal, So just so you can transact. What do you guys think? Why get yourself something on a bad deal? Why, why would you ever take a bad deal? Well, I don't think there's going to be a, a, a floor that you're going to be able to come in and, and, and get anywhere close to the sacrifice price. You know, or maybe even six times that by the time it opens. So to what may be a bad deal for me, because I got it dirt cheap, may be a good deal to you. How is it a bad deal getting into Ethereum day one with Benjamin? How is that a bad deal? Are you kidding me? No. No, I know. Oh, Billy, I agree with everything that he's saying, but just the word bad deal. Like, no one takes a bad deal. That's just the improper terminology to use. Define what a bad deal is. Like, like, uh, like we just said, right? Even the top of a local top when we launch in a year could be just, I mean, oh my God, oh my God, I bought it this price. This is the best thing I ever fucking did ever. And then that day you're like, oh my God, I bought the top. I'm like, yeah, okay. Then it dipped a little bit and then it went up like 100x. Like, did you really care? No. Exactly. Not in the long term. Exactly. The best time to buy is literally before it goes live, man. The same like I've learned since 2016 to now. If you buy in early, you are you are golden, right? Because a two X is still a win. If you do a two X, it's still a win. Now, if you right, you can wait it out, delay your gratification, and hit potentially ten thousand X. I mean, what, one other thing I was going to say is like, anybody who's selling Pulse or PulseX has to understand that they're selling coins they won't be able to sell for a thousand times higher, like later, at some point in the future. So it's like, okay, you can do these loan things. You can have like a situation where you have to sell because you need to live for whatever reason. I mean, that's fine. But you just got to like understand that anything that you sell, if you're a sacrificer, you have like the best deal you possibly can ever get. And now you're selling that deal away, and hopefully you're not being a degen trader and thinking you're going to be able to like trade your way to to, to wealth. It's probably not going to happen. But you're going to keep it, right? Keep it as well. Mental, real quick. You got to keep in mind as well that uh, there's a lot of newbies in here for the first time that did not sacrifice for Paul Sex or Paul Chain, but yet somebody told him about this chat, and then we're talking about bad deals. So I agree, we probably shouldn't use that terminology because if they buy the first day, like Gavin said, in a year from now, if it's a thousand X, do they really care? I think it's important that we bring that up. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm one of those guys. That, that's my profile. But, pardon me, I, I miss it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, sorry. No, no, you just you know, mentioned my profile, so I, 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 I didn't know about Pulse. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to acquire pulse at launch and you know i've got my spreadsheet i'm looking at you know what i wish what i hope you know can i get it for 0 0.002 can i get it for 0 0.009 i mean bad deal right but still you know and then i multiply and i'm like okay so what if it goes to five cents and you know where am i at you're a new person you can't anchor your price at somebody who sacrificed because you're just going to drive yourself insane yeah, the best price you're gonna get is the price that you can you're available to get, and that you need to like understand that and be happy with that. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. And I've got my, you know, and I look at the calculations, and I'm like, well, I hope, but I, I might not get it. But I, okay, and it's gonna be wildly valuable. But then it's stupid if I ask the question, "What do you guys think? You know, where's the price gonna go in the first two weeks?" I don't know. I, 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 well, but I'll be ready on day one. In the first two weeks, it'll probably go everywhere. Yeah, Absolutely. Hey, 
Absolutely. It'll be so volatile that it's like up one day and then it's down another. And you're like, hey, what range is the deal, right? Like at what levels are we talking about? No idea. All right. Hey, hey, Gamma. Gamma. Are you there, Gamma? Uh, yeah. What's up? So that logic that uh, you use um, to say, hey, if you got in at sacrifice price, you know, why be trading away that, right? Okay? Or swapping or whatever. You're, you got in at the lowest base and agree that lowest possible price. Does that same logic that you just used apply to swapping pulse X for pulse chain? Wouldn't that kind of dilute that position? Do you agree or not? To agree? I would never do that. If you got into okay, that, good. I mean, I wouldn't swap. I mean, you may be in a situation where, like, say you, you got into pulse X and you didn't get in the yeah. pulse because you didn't know about it. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of people in that position. So you have a choice. You can swap the thing you bought at the best position. The, you, you, you sacrifice, you get the best price ever you got it at a launch yeah you can either bring your money in or you could swap your pulse x for pulse i would the looting you win okay i wouldn't do that. that most people most people most people there's two arguments that i've been repeating over in this thing where i've been taking a lot of heat a is that hex thing that we talked about earlier right and b trading away your pulse x for pulse chain i've been on that side Taking crap and argument for months, telling people not to do it, right? That it's not going to be in their best interest. And nobody, it to me, that seems like so, like, why would you do that? Why would you dilute your bank? I mean, you so could I be in a bringing, I, keep bring, I, I, keep, I keep bringing this <laughs> up to help, to help the people who are listening, right? I mean, I don't care how much yeah. heat I take, but it doesn't make sense to do that. Benjamin, I mean, you you could be in a position where the ratio is just like and so skewed that you're like, oh, okay, well, in this position because the ratio is so skewed in my favor, then I can move ten percent over, and I'm like, okay, maybe that happens. But then now you're beating every, now you have to try and beat everybody else to that great deal. Uh, so maybe that's going to work out for you. Maybe it's not. But then you got to understand ratios. You got to understand what a good deal is. And you got to know technically how to do it, and that's a lot of ifs. So is it out of the gate? <laughs> out of the gate, you're trading two for one. That would be the best deal that you could possibly get, right? Or two of your pulse X for one pulse chain, and even that is a bad deal, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not going to be looking at ratios. I'm not going to be swapping. I'm going to be trying to get more pulse X, but I'm not going to give up any pulse. I'm not going to give up any pulse X. I'm not going to give up any hex. To do it, but that's what I'm going to do, and other people are in different positions. So, I like because I don't need to get into any position. So it's like I'm not the standard. The standard is probably majority of people probably didn't get in the pulse. They got in the pulse sex. What are you going to do? Well, you have two options: try and find a good ratio, a good deal, and then swap ten or twenty percent of pulse sex in the pulse. If you can get a good deal, maybe. Or brand new money. Have an ERC twenty token and you get copied and then you can buy pulse six or pulse with it. Or wait for the bridge and you bring in new money from fiat over and buy pulse. Either on Uniswap or on Pulse Sex if you bridge money in. Or right? I mean, you got options. And the and the great option, everybody wants pulse chain. Of course I want pulse chain. But I'm gonna uh, stake my pulse X in a single sided uh, pool and with that I can buy pulse chain if I want. But why would I necessarily do that when I can buy more Pulse X to get more, put it to, to, in the single side state to even get more? So, I don't I mean, think there's a good reason to keep buying Pulse Chain if you got a bunch of Pulse X. I mean, I, I'm, I'm speculating that the, the, burn, the buy and burn of Pulse X is going to be quite substantial. I don't think that's, I don't, I don't think that's crazy to say that. Uh, especially versus say pulse uh, by uh, the buy burn function because the transaction fees aren't that high and it's only twenty five percent and it's going to be there but it's not like that much. Um, I mean, it's the pulse x buy and burn is going to be you know many 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 multiples more and it's buying pulse x from the market and then burning it. Um, 
So I do not want to give up my pulse X position at all. And if, if I had to say, you okay, oh, you put $100,000 in the pulse X, you didn't know about pulse, okay, well, maybe you move 10 or 20% in the pulse if you find a good ratio to get it, you know, to get in some pulse. I'm like, okay, fine. But the way some people are talking, they're talking like, it seems like they're going to like, they're moving their, their, like their whole bag around trying to like chase ratios. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't think that's a very good idea at all. Because it's a mindset. And it's a, it, oh, pardon me. Go ahead. I just have a quick question, but um, before I ask that question, I'm one of those people that sacrifice and hold sex and not in polls just because I wasn't, I didn't hear about it or I wasn't fast enough. And I have no intention of swapping my pulse sex to polls at all because I don't want to chase ratios because I'm not really uh, savvy with all this technology. And also I want to bring in new money and, and buy polls. But what my question is, is this. So we know that those that are staking hex will be rewarded when others who have staked hex decide to uh, cancel their um, staking contract. But I'm wondering, is there going to be any incentives? And can Richard Hart change to, to, to make it an incentive that once these other two projects launch, anybody who quickly maybe uh, sells their polls or their poll sites, those that are holding or even staking will be rewarded. So I'm just asking, like, can this, can, can he change things around and, and create new incentives? Not in that way. I mean, he's not going to be able to penalize current holders or people who, like, unstake. I mean, I guess in theory, they could change the contract before we go live <laughs> at the poll sites, but I don't think that would, I don't think that's on the table. Like, literally, like, he could do it. He could add that feature and then I say Pulse X. But there's no time lock feature in Pulse Validations uh, Delegation. And there's no time lock with um, Pulse X. I mean, there's like a one day time lock, but it's not really effectively no time lock. So that's just not a feature that's built into Pulse X for Pulse. But it is in the Hex, because Hex is a completely different product. So you're saying that there's, there's not going to be any kind of, like if somebody wants to stake their Pulse X, they can't choose a time lock to like stake it for one year, five years, ten years? No, that's, it's not built like that. Yeah. You, you can generate, like for, for Pulse X, single asset staking, uh, a third party token has some tokens, like a billion tokens. They want to do some marketing. They propose to the community, Pulse X community. That, hey, we want to give a billion tokens over like a month at this ratio, at this this rate, and like we're gonna, you know, then you can put your pulse X into this pool, and then over time you can, you know, in aggregate you could earn a billion tokens, and then everyone does that. Like that's what's happening. There's no time lock with that. Like those pools that are finite, like a week, a month, six months. I mean, whatever, whatever the the time is. And so, and then you are in those, and then you can remove your money whenever you want, and you only re you only get rewards when you're in the pool, so you want to be in the pool, and then the pool can end in a week, and then, then you can remove your money out, and then put it into a different pool. Like, the, it doesn't make any sense for that to have a time lock, because it's not hex, it's not the same thing. It's not incentivized well, it the same on, way. It, it depends on what you're looking for. Are you trying to lock up an earned yield, or are you looking for that, that feature, that where you are getting it out of your hands so you're not tempted to sell it. Like, what's, what's more important? Are you I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're not, yeah, he was asking you, I believe. Yeah, it wasn't clear. So, like, what, what's more important to you? Earning your while it's locked or just getting it out of your hands so that you're not tempted to sell it to give it time to mature as an asset? Well, I'm, I'm looking for any strategy that's going to benefit me for holding uh, and or staking. So that's why I'm just asking like about different incentives and can he 
develop new incentives as as uh, as it goes along, I guess. I mean, I think the incentives that he that have already been laid out are pretty pretty substantial. I mean, you don't want to make this this stuff doesn't need to be that complicated. You know what I mean? To have power, it should be simple and it should be like pretty direct. And in aggregate, it'll just work, right? Buying and burning, right? The, you're not there's no there's no in, there's no inflation for the pulse act, so that there's got to be inflation from somewhere to give incentives. So now there's an incentive token, and the third party tokens are created like like tons anyway, so that those can be an incentive, right? For for taking pulse acts off the market, like it put it into pools. Like I I like the incentives the way they are now. Could there be more, I guess, but we're launching pretty soon. <laughs> when you say uh, buy and burn, what are we burning? Are we burning hex? No, that's pulse. Because we're talking about pulse here. Pulse X. The part, 22% uh, or 21% of the fees from all the trading on pulse X goes into a little pool, and you can click a button for buy and burn, and then all the fees from those pools. All the you know, the fees that were generated, twenty one percent or twenty two percent, are collected, and then you can hit a button, and then you can burn. You can use the fees to buy pulse on the market, and then those are all burned. So you have a buy and burn that's inherent to the pulse system for trading, to incentivize uh, price appreciation, and holding pulse because you get an indirect benefit of just holding pulse because. The twenty-one or twenty-two percent of the fees are bought and burned on the market, like throughout the day, a hundred times a day, one time a day. It doesn't matter. But they're all being burned. There's no central party that you have to rely on to like buy and burn because you can actually go there and you can buy and burn and get a little bonus for yourself for doing so. It's a very powerful incentive. Oh, okay. See, I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> so um, I'm glad I asked because now it, it led, it led you to explain something that I didn't even know. Yeah. About. Well, okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So you have the indirect uh, buy and burn, which is basically taking pulse off the market and and buying it from the market, right? So that that's important. That's being bought from the market and then it's burned out of existence into into the burn address, and then the incentive for st for locking it up is given from like third party tokens, which right would probably be used to buy more pulse X. So you're not there's no there's no inflation in pulse X token that will be like sold on the market. So the negative externality of like pulse X, like there's very few, really. It has utility because it's part of the DAO, you have to vote. It has utility because it's being bought and burned twenty one or twenty two percent of the fees. And then the, you can block it up for a week, for two weeks, or whatever, and get a third party token that you can sell that third party token for Pulse X for buy pressure. I mean, it's that is fine for me. I think that's enough. There are, there are really good videos about the, the buying burn. You're going to find good videos on there. On uh, YouTube, or where should I go? Yeah, 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 for sure. YouTube, definitely, Hexagon is making really good videos explaining very simply the buying for him. Yeah. K for K. K for K is the guy. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, he's the guy. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you so much, guys. Mr. Oh, Jay, how you doing? Hey, Mr. There was a clever guy who hey, decided he wanted to work out a spreadsheet about different scenarios for how well the you know what the, the yield would look like on Pulse X uh, single staking pool. Um, he, and you input what you uh, what you think the APR is going to be, and you know Pulse X fans, it, it's it's not for sure it's going to work out like his spreadsheet, but you look at the spreadsheet and you put in some figures and you you realize. You know, the potential for passive income. Why would you? Why would you get rid of your pulse tax? Literally. I mean, for me, my pulse position, I have it from sacrifice, so I probably I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to sit there and appreciating value. 
right? And I'm going to get some small delegation rewards, which are very, very minimal, right? But I'll be able to vote for validators, so that's why I care about that. My pulse exposition, I want to get more of that. So single asset, staking, third-party tokens are given to me for free. Yeah, maybe sell those for pulse X. Now I can dollar cost average for those third-party tokens for free in the pulse X every day. Awesome. I love that. Hex, I'm staked. I get Hex for free in the contract every day for free. It's like BCAN every day for Hex. It seems like a winning strategy, and it's very simple, not complicated at all. But over the long term, it'll be awesome. 